G'day guys. I have the privilege this morning of um, being able to share as we lead into a time of communion. And I just want to encourage you, if you don't have some, some emblems ready, just to pause the video now and go grab yourself a little piece of bread um, or a little bit of juice just so that we can partake in the emblems together at the end of this. As we prepare for communion this morning, I want to read some words from the book of 1 John. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about who the Apostle John was. So we know from the scripture that, that John and his older brother James uh, were two of Jesus' 12 disciples, two of the, the 12 blokes who were closest to Jesus during his time here on earth. In the book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, we read these words. It says, These are the 12. Simon, Jesus later named him Peter, meaning rock. James, son of Zebedee, John, the brother of James. Jesus nicknamed the Zebedee brothers, I'm not going to try to say the Hebrew word, but it means the sons of thunder. Now, the rock and the sons of thunder, to me, sound more like professional wrestlers than they do apostles. And I've always thought it was pretty weird that the gospel went to the, the effort of recording the fact that Jesus gave some nicknames to his disciples. Reading into it a little bit and, and reading some of the commentary around the, the sons of thunder, it's believed that, that Jesus used this term as a nickname because of the, the temper of the sons of Zebedee, because of the fact that these two weren't backwards and coming forwards and they didn't shy away from conflict. In Luke chapter 9, we see them asking Jesus if they can call down fire from the heavens upon their enemies. Jesus says no and rebukes them. And then in Mark chapter 10, we see them coming to Jesus and asking if they can be the ones to sit on his left and right hand. And this causes quite an argument and a fight amongst the disciples. We often see these two um, being quite headstrong, being quite stubborn and, and fighting amongst themselves. Now, I can tell you something as, as the oldest of four siblings, sometimes siblings fight. I get on really well with my, my brothers and sisters, but there are times growing up and, and being together where you're going to butt heads a little bit. And I can also tell you this, no one can get under your skin quite like your little brother. Now. My brother and I, Jack, get on brilliantly, but there were times growing up where he annoyed me and we fought. I remember one instance. Now, we used to get up really early on, on Saturday mornings to watch Saturday Disney so we could watch cartoons. And Jack and Kate and I had all gotten up early and, and set up in, out in front of TV. And Jack, being a bit younger than, than Kate and I, had decided that he wanted to play at the same time. So he'd gone and grabbed a Pringles can and he had it in his teeth and, and over his nose, like that. And he was racing around making elephant noises because that was his trunk. And he was getting us to feed him imaginary peanuts and he was doing tricks and, and whatever else. He was a weird kid. Um, and we said to him, all right, Jack, that, that's fine, but just do it during the ad so we can watch our cartoon. And initially he, he was fine with that. But as time progressed, he started getting bored and more and more he was pretending to be an elephant while the cartoon was on. And we'd said to him, all right, just, just do it during the ads. But he persisted. And I think he started to notice that he was annoying us a little bit. So I told him off a couple of times, but slowly yet surely, his Pringles trunk kept biting up against my side of my head. And I said, Jack, not now, go away. But he continued. So eventually my temper got the best of me and I turned and went pop right on the end of the can. Now, if you look closely at my brother today, you'll see he's got a little scar across the bridge of his nose, a little notch from where that Pringles can hit him and split him open. Now, did I overreact and then did my temper get the best of me? Yeah, absolutely. Did he deserve it? Maybe a little bit. Um, so John and James were brothers and, and then they were, you know, part of this, this group of 12. Um, and I always really, I don't know, find it reassuring when I see the, the disciples sort of stuffing up and arguing. But what's clear from the scriptures and what, what's clear from reading the Gospel of John and then the letters of John is that John's time with Jesus fundamentally transformed who he was, completely defined and changed his identity. And in, in the letters of John, so in, in 1st, 2nd and 3rd John, we see the Apostle John writing to the church, teaching them the importance of loving one another and getting along with one another. Now, I, I want to read some words from um, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. 
My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences a relationship with God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't love. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. This is the kind of love we're talking about. Not that once upon a time we loved God, but that he loved us and that he sent his only son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. My dear, dear friends, if God loved us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. No one has seen God ever, but if we love one another, God dwells, God dwells deeply within us and his love becomes complete in us. Perfect love. There's a lot in this world that, that seeks to divide us and seeks to to separate us from each other. Um, and I think what I've noticed in this time of not being able to meet together is that I really have missed our time of communion. Whatever our gender, race, political belief, whatever football team we barrack for, when we come before the foot of the cross, we're all equal. We all acknowledge the fact that we fall short of the glory of God and we are in need of his love. I think as a family, you know, a church is a big family of Christ and there are going to be times where we get under each other's skin, but it's so important that we model this love of God to one another and that we seek to go out into the community and model the love and compassion and understanding that God has shown to us through sending his son, Jesus. As we spend some time now reflecting and repenting and sharing in these emblems, I just wanted you to encourage you just to think about the lengths that God has gone to, to to bring you close, to to forgive you, to to fix His relationship with you, um, and, and I guess reflect on how we can go out into our world and seek to mend divisions, to seek to fix this broken world by by forgiving and by loving one another. So I'm just going to pray now. Father Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of your son, Jesus. We thank you that, Father, that you loved us so much that you came after us. Lord, I pray that as we spend some time now reflecting, you'll help us just to realize um, what that cost you. Um, and Father, I really pray that, I guess, as we go forward, we might seek to, to love one another like you have loved us. Um, Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd encourage you now just to, to partake in the emblems and, and to spend some time in quiet reflection.